What up, nomads? In today's video, we're talking lost luggage. Even though stuff, or the lack of it, should never ruin your travels, lost or delayed luggage sucks big time. In this video, I walk through the different scenarios of delayed or lost luggage so you know how to prevent it, what you can do to track down your bag, and your rights to compensation. Let's go. As a self-proclaimed expert packer, I pride myself in packing a carry-on for almost every trip. If you're new to this channel, I share packing and travel tips so you can avoid situations like lost luggage because you've packed everything in a carry-on. Okay, pontification aside, I'm also still a human being and a fashion lover and content creator, so I do from time to time check a bag. The times I check a bag include trips around six to eight weeks long or longer and trips where I'm packing gifts or specialty items like at Christmas. For a video on tips to get through TSA quickly when you're traveling with gifts, I'll leave a link to a video above. The other scenario which has happened to me several times is when the plane is too small for even typical carry-on suitcases. I've had this happen on smaller planes like the Bombardier CRJ, where they offer at the gate to check my bag to the final destination. This is called gate checking. Okay, real quick, what's the difference between sky checking, gate checking, and regular check bags? Sky check is when you're taking a small plane and they take your bag between getting your ID checked at the gate and actually getting on the plane. They usually give you a small tag and put your bag at the bottom of the plane. Then when you get off the plane, you collect your bag on the jet bridge or at the bottom of the plane steps before entering the airport. In this situation, whether you're taking one, two, or three flights, you are responsible for taking your bag with you after each leg. Gate checked is when you check your bag at the gate rather than before going through security at the airline counter. Gate checked often happens when the gate agents realize the plane is too small for everyone's carry-on luggage and ask for volunteers or in some case, force you to check your bag before getting on the plane. This is usually free of charge because your suitcase technically is a carry-on size. If you have a connecting flight, the bag will be transferred for you and you will pick it up at baggage claim at your final destination. Regular checked bag, well, is regular and this is done at the airline's counter before going through security. My first tip for surviving the real curveball that is lost luggage is to pack the essentials that you need in your carry-on or personal item. Nobody wants to pack like they're about to lose their luggage, but I highly recommend that you do because it definitely saved me on one of my experiences. I lost my luggage on the first leg of a six week trip in Europe. I was traveling for work, so I had to hit the ground running as soon as I arrived. My first stop was Berlin for a three day conference before continuing on to Bulgaria and then Greece. I decided to pack everything I'd need for Berlin in my carry-on duffel and my tech accessories in my backpack. I had a laptop, cables, conference clothing, a few changes of underwear, basic toiletries and supplements, and some currency. If I'd had medication, I probably would have packed that in my carry-on as well. Having all the essentials makes delayed bags less of an issue since you can continue your planned activities while the airline locates your bag. Tip number two is to keep a list of everything in your checked bag. It's not fun to plan for the worst, but if you do lose your bag, you'll wanna get full compensation for what you had in there. Having that list and the associated value ready to go can help with any insurance or compensation claims. It may also help you prove that it's your bag in case they find two similar bags when searching for yours and need you to prove that it's yours by naming some of the items inside. Tip number three is to always leave plenty of time for checked bag drop-off. Every airline will list the drop-off times for checked luggage on their site. These can vary for domestic flights, international flights, and whether or not you're checking an oversized item. Some airlines are notoriously strict about the time limits and some airports are also very busy. I've been in a situation where I rushed to get on a plane and there was a miscommunication about my baggage info and it ended up getting stuck in my layover city rather than follow me all the way to my destination. 
This could have been totally and entirely avoided if I'd gotten to the airport a little earlier. So I'm sharing my lesson learned with you. It's good to learn from your mistakes, even better to learn from others' mistakes. Let me know in the comments below about your lost luggage stories. My fourth tip is to track your bags. This includes taking a photo of your luggage tags and keeping your copy of the little tag in a safe place. Some airlines have great apps that include live bag tracking. You can also pop a tile tracker in your bag that can help you pinpoint your bag's location. The tile uses low power Bluetooth signals to triangulate the location of your stuff, like lost luggage. So what to do when your bag is actually lost? Well, let's say you're at baggage claim and the last piece of luggage gets picked up. So you're sure by now yours isn't coming. In this case, proceed to the counter for lost luggage and figure out if lost luggage is handled by your airline or by a third party company or by the airport. Most companies and airports subcontract luggage handling to other companies. Ryanair, for example, uses Swissport. These companies use a central database to track down luggage across airlines and around the world. It really depends. I've had situations where I spoke with an employee of the airline I was using to start my paperwork, and sometimes it was an employee of the airport who dealt with all lost luggage queries across all airlines. Whether you are given a paper form or sent to a website to fill out a form there, here is the information you need when filling out a lost luggage claim. First, you need all your flight numbers from the actual operators, not code share flight numbers. For example, I've lost luggage from Montreal to Berlin via Frankfurt. One flight was Air Canada and the second flight was Lufthansa. However, because I purchased my ticket through Air Canada, both flights had an Air Canada code share number. So I just had to look up what the actual flight number was with the Lufthansa code. So make sure that you have the proper flight numbers the day of the flight and the arrival time, but most importantly for the last flight, because this is the airline that's gonna be responsible for finding your bag. Second, you need your baggage tag number. I did not have mine and this proved to be a real obstacle in retrieving my bag. They took my ticket number and a description of my suitcase instead and started the search anyway. The baggage tag number is really the best piece of information you can have. So in my situation, I had to track that down to make sure my file was complete. The third thing that you need is an address and a way to contact you at your temporary destination if this isn't a flight home. This could be your hotel or the place where you're staying if that's like a friend or a family member's address. If you're flying into a foreign country, you'll need to complete a customs form for processing your luggage. You can do this on location at the airport baggage claim office or online. Once your information is submitted, World Tracker will generate a tracking code for your file, which will look like this. The first letters are the airport of your final destination, the second two letters are the airline, and the last four digits are your personal tracking code. With this, you can update your information, such as your temporary address, for example, if you need to change it because you've changed hotels or if you're changing it to your home destination because you decided to go home. You can also use this code to check on the status of the investigation. So when should you follow up on lost luggage? Airlines find most luggage within 24 hours. It's likely you took a flight that operates every day or multiple times a day, so the luggage handlers will often put your bag on the next identical flight. So that could be later that day if it's a flight that operates a lot, or it could be 24 hours later if it's more of a once a day kind of flight. The airline considers a bag delayed if it's lost for zero to five days, five to 21 days, it goes into an advanced search, but most airlines consider it lost after 21 days of search. If you're calling to follow up, it can help, but only if you're providing new information. So in my Berlin example, I had to track down my luggage tag number from Air Canada and give that to Lufthansa and World Tracker so that my file was complete. A few hours after that phone conversation, my tile actually pinged me that my luggage was in town in Berlin and the pin was actually right over my hotel. And later that day, when I got back to my hotel room, the hotel had delivered my luggage to my room. What are your rights regarding lost luggage? 
Under the Montreal Convention, a UN aviation agreement about lost luggage reimbursement, in the carriage of baggage, the liability of the carrier in the case of destruction, loss, damage, or delay is limited to a thousand special drawing rights for each passenger. SDR is basically a made-up currency that is adapted into your local currency depending on the situation. Right now, a thousand SDR is equal to about 1500 USD. So how much you can actually get reimbursed depends on your airline, how long your luggage is lost, and any travel credit card you might have. In case you don't have a travel credit card, I do highly recommend it for this reason and for healthcare coverage. I've only filed a claim once before, and it was when my bag was delayed over 24 hours. I was able to claim 100% off toiletries and underwear and 50% off longer wear items like clothes and shoes. At the time I was in a hurry in the middle of working, so I just picked up a dress, uh, underwear, and did a small drugstore run. But I still managed to get some pretty nice Kiehl's products fully reimbursed. I submitted receipts and pictures and received my reimbursement from Lufthansa within three business days. Many credit cards offer more coverage up to $2,000 for completely lost luggage. This sounds like a lot, like yay, $2,000 going on a shopping spree. But if you think about the actual value of the stuff in your check bag, I know that for me, that probably wouldn't cover half of it. So my tips would be to apply my tips to avoid losing your luggage, to not travel with valuables at all, to always carry them on the plane if you are bringing some, or to get separate insurance for those valuables in case of loss. I hope this video was helpful. I don't wish lost luggage on anyone, but if it does happen, I hope it's when you're going home rather than starting out your trip and that it is resolved quickly. And remember, most everything is replaceable. Don't let it get in the way of an awesome trip. Happy travels. Thanks for watching this video until the end. For more content like this, make sure you subscribe to the capsule suitcase and turn on notifications so you get all the fresh content as soon as it comes out. Thanks for supporting this channel. Happy travels.